I've had a ton of comments as of late of people wanting us to go through and look at fantasy football playoff schedules. Honestly, probably about the time to get to it. I mean, if you're sitting here, if you're seven and one, if you are six and two, if you're five and three, you're feeling good. You're feeling like you are going to be making the fantasy football playoffs. So maybe we can identify some buy low candidates here. But before we get into it, go down there, drop a like on this video, subscribe to the channel if you play fantasy football. And of course, if you have any questions, you know where to leave those. You can go down in the comment section. And down there in the comment section, you will also find a link to Underdog Fantasy. Where on Underdog Fantasy, you can check out all these player props. They actually have an NFL playoff draft best ball contest launching right now. But most importantly, if you sign up with promo code Flock, they're going to match your first deposit dollar for dollar up to 100. And because I worked my butt off to get you this, this week you get Derek. Henry over under half a rushing yard only for people who use promo code flock on underdog available in damn near every state deposit 10 bucks code flock immediately at $20 in your account go bet the 20 on Derrick Henry for at least a rushing yard hell I'm pretty sure it's gonna hit and I think that should be it you may or may not see Derrick Henry later on in this video but let's dive into it starting off with the 10th best playoff schedule this one was hard. I, I mean, honestly, 10th, not that good. It kind of average, if we're going to be honest. We have the Houston Texans. I mean, first matchup, they're going up against the Kansas City Chiefs, who from a running back points per game perspective have been average so far with their defense so far. I will say it's not going to be a great spot for the Houston Texans and Damian Pierce, assuming that they trail by multiple touchdowns throughout the entire contest. What you're kind of going to be hoping for here is... Maybe just maybe Damian Pierce gets a crap ton of targets out of the backfield. Maybe he can save himself just with the receiving usage in general. But after that, you have the Tennessee Titans. Another very tough matchup. Titans actually have a top 10 defense against the run so far this year. But the championship game is somewhat nice. Going up against the Jacksonville Jaguars. So far, they've been the seventh worst defense against the run. With Damian Pierce, I mean, we just kind of had to choose a team at 10. Honestly, the matchups are so much better going forward. I, I wanted to make a top 10 list. We should have probably just made a top nine because our ninth one, I mean, going to be much better. You have Denver going up against the Cardinals, the Rams, and the Chiefs. Not a single bad matchup here if you're looking. Pretty much all these matchups are going to be average, but you don't have to play the Bills. You don't have to pay the play the Pats. You can avoid the Dallas Cowboys. You can avoid Philadelphia. You're avoiding all the difficult matchups, which is going to be pretty nice. The issue is if you wanted to go out and use this as actionable data, well, how useful is it really? Are you trading for Melvin Gordon? Are you trading for Chase Edmonds? Are you going to pick up Latavius Murray? I, I mean, I don't necessarily know who the guy would be. I think maybe we want to be rostering Chase Edmonds in a full PBR format, knowing that he can catch the ball. And it looks like Denver's not in love with Melvin Gordon right now. But now going over to New Orleans, starting at eight, this is where we get the good matchups. The New Orleans Saints are going up against the Atlanta Falcons, who so far this season, despite giving up three touchdowns to Dante Foreman this past week, have a middle of the road rush defense so far, but they're going up against Cleveland as well, who've had a bottom five rush defense. And then they're going up against Philadelphia, who... I mean, on paper are an elite level defensive unit, but they have been middle of the road to go along with that Atlanta Falcons defense so far in fantasy points allowed to the running back position with Alvin Kamara in particular. I think if you want to project Andy Dalton to be the starting quarterback here for the rest of the season for the New Orleans Saints, Kamara could be a very appealing by low guy. I mean, Kamara, we had him as a by low guy earlier this season for like a month straight. Can't really call him a buy low player anymore, but he could be someone that you want to go out there and trade for given this schedule if you think Andy Dalton's going to be the starter the rest of the season. However, I think the situation may get a little bit worse for Kamara going forward if for whatever reason, maybe they go back to Jameis Winston. If you have Michael Thomas coming back in, if you have Jarvis Landry coming back in, and all of a sudden Kamara's not seeing the same target share that he's had over the past month, so there are a few red flags with the Kamara profile. I know some people are worried about the court case, but if we're just looking at the fantasy football playoff schedule, pretty damn good here. Now going over to our next one, we are going to have the Indianapolis Colts at seven with Indianapolis going up against Minnesota week 15. 
Pretty tough matchup on that one. They do have a top 10 defense against the run. But after that, week 16, the Los Angeles Chargers. Beautiful matchup. Chargers have had the second worst defense against the run so far this season. And then they have the Giants in the championship week, which so far the Giants have had a middle of the road defense with Jonathan Taylor. We've talked about this before. I understand, yes. He is not worth the number one overall pick. Yes, I took Jonathan Taylor at the 101 in a ton of leagues. I had Jonathan Taylor ranked ahead of Christian McCaffrey coming into this season. And I am sorry. I embarrassed myself. I should have been like every other smart person on the planet and been going with Christian McCaffrey at one overall player we'll get to in just one second. However, if we're looking at how the fantasy football sentiment has changed around Jonathan Taylor, people realize that he's no longer going to be that number one overall running back. People realize he's probably not going to be a top three guy, but people are treating him as if he's a mid running back two in fantasy. People are treating him as if he's going to be a worse option going forward than someone like Leonard Fournette. And if we look at this playoff schedule for JT, especially that week 16 matchup against the Chargers, I really want to be taking advantage of it. I mean, with no Naheem Hines here in Indianapolis anymore, maybe Deion Jackson comes in and sees some of these targets that Naheem Hines would have had, but I actually really like going and trying to get JT if he only costs someone like Leonard Fournette or Madre Stevenson. Now going over to our next guy, someone I did not like coming into the season, but he may just may be a buy low candidate. Najee Harris with Najee. I'm not a fan. Don't have him in many leagues. I mean, we said to draft David Montgomery if you wanted a slow running back with volume in a bad offense coming into the year. But if we are looking at Najee Harris, I think the situation may get a little bit better with Claypool leaving Pittsburgh. We know Claypool, historically speaking, has been a wide receiver that they're quick to give carries to out of the backfield. And with Najee Harris going up against Carolina week 15, they have a bottom 10 defense against the run going up against the Raiders. Week 16, we just saw what Kamara did to them. They also have a bottom 10 defense against the run. Now, the championship week going up against Baltimore, they have an above average defense, but it's not a stellar unit. It's not like the New England Patriots. I mean, so far, they've just been above average against the run if we're just looking at fantasy points allowed so far this year. So with Najee, if you're playing in a full PBR format, I think that maybe, just maybe, He's interesting to take a look at if we can go through and trade someone like Deontay Foreman for him, another running back that's in a very bad offense, but obviously coming off a very hot game. But I would be a little bit worried about Deontay Foreman because I'm expecting Carolina to not continue to score 30 points a game. And at the same time, I would go out on a limb here. I know we're going out on a limb, but I would say that Kenny Pickett is probably going to be a better quarterback in the second half of the season than the combo of P.J. Walker and Baker Mayfield. But now going over to the top five, starting off at five, we have Christian McCaffrey. This is where these matchups get real juicy. With CMC going up against Seattle, Washington, and Las Vegas, you have Seattle, the sixth worst defense against the run so far for looking at fantasy points allowed. Washington below average. The Raiders also another bottom 10 unit. So Christian McCaffrey looking like he's going to smash. Now, obviously, CMC went through and put up one of the best performances at the running back position so far this season this past week. Now, I think we maybe get a small step backwards because keep in mind, this past week, you didn't have Debo Samuel. I think Debo and Christian McCaffrey are going to be comparable players. It's like Debo Samuel and Christian McCaffrey are essentially the same guy. CMC runs the ball a little more. Debo Samuel <laughs> catches the ball a little bit more. So I think when Debo comes back in, he's probably going to knock CMC down a peg where CMC is not going to be averaging 35, 40 points per game rest of season. But given this fantasy football playoff schedule, given what we saw this past week, I think you could safely rank him at minimum. As a top two guy, right alongside with Eckler. But going over to our next team, don't know how applicable this actually is because there's nobody on the Rams that we want. I mean, with the Rams, I was the idiot drafting Cam Akers coming into fantasy football drafts this season. I'll be the first person to admit that. One of my worst calls of the year. The fact that I was willing to draft Cam Akers in the sixth round. Laughably bad. And then once Cam Akers said he was no longer with this team, I looked at Kyron Williams and said, okay, not worried about you. I guess Daryl Henderson's a top 24 running back if he's going to get the guaranteed volume. Well, 
Um, looks like that was completely wrong as well. Looks like the Los Angeles Rams have a three-man running back by committee going forward where I don't know if you're ever going to be able to start any of these guys. So even if they have a phenomenal playoff schedule, probably something we should just go ahead and ignore unless you think you can make a bet on one of these running backs turning into not necessarily an every down player in this offense. You don't need an every down guy, but you do kind of need someone at least seeing 60, 70% of the snaps and touches if you want to get excited about starting someone. Now going over to someone that is going to win fantasy football championships, Derek Henry. Derrick Henry going up against the Chargers week 15, who have the second worst run defense in the entire NFL. Um, Derrick Henry what, puts up 40 points in that game. Then he's going up against the Houston Texans in the second round who have the worst defense against the run in the NFL. Derrick Henry in those two contests is pretty much a lock to put up 50 points at least. Of course, that's total. Now, the issue is for the championship matchup, you have him going up against the Dallas Cowboys. The Dallas Cowboys have a top five defense against the run so far this year. However, what I have found personally is that a lot of people overrate looking at that championship matchup, looking at the championship schedule that we have. Whereas you have to win week 15 to advance. You have to win week 16 to advance. They are arguably just as, if not more important than the championship week in general. If we just try to optimize for week 17 here, if we just try to optimize for the fantasy football championship, then you're going to be in a world of pain when we get knocked out round one. You're going to be in a world of pain when we get knocked out in the semifinals. So even if Derrick Henry has the bad championship matchup, the first two weeks look phenomenal. Now going over to our next team, we are going to have the Kansas City Chiefs. The Chiefs get to play the Houston Texans, who have the worst run defense in the NFL for the first week of the playoffs. Second week of the playoffs, they're going up against the Seattle Seahawks, who've allowed the sixth most fantasy points to the running back position. And then the final week, they're going up against Denver, who's been middle of the road here. So you're essentially looking at Kansas City in a very similar light to Tennessee, where the first two weeks, great matchups. The championship week, you don't love it, but it is a little bit better than what you'll have with the Tennessee Titans going up against the Dallas Cowboys. Now, very similar to what we have with the Los Angeles Rams, Kind of difficult to know who we should be targeting with Kansas City. This past week before the bye, you had Isaiah Pacheco being announced as a starting running back for the Chiefs, but in reality, it didn't really matter whenever you have Isaiah Pacheco coming in and all of a sudden, I mean, he's just sliding right into being in that running back by committee with Jarrett McKinnon, with Clyde Rizalaire. All three of these guys are playing a lot of snaps. All three of these guys are getting touches. If this was a two-man running back by committee, you could be excited about these guys. But very similar to what we said at the beginning part of the year when we were saying to sell Clyde over to Lair, go get Travis Etienne. Obviously, we can't do that anymore. It's hard to get excited about a running back that's in a three-man running back by committee. Even if you're in that elite level offense in Kansas City, if you divide that pie so many different ways, it's just annoying as hell. Now, this is the most depressing thing that you're going to hear. Because I know that 99% of people in the flock, or realistically speaking, maybe 60, 70% of us, it's a crazy number, have Brees Hall. You know where we're going with this. The number one, number one team with their schedule for the running back position in the fantasy football playoffs, the New York Jets. They play the Lions the first round of the playoffs. They play the Jaguars the second round. The Seattle Seahawks, the third round, they have the third worst, the seventh worst, and the sixth worst defenses and allowing running backs to just score fantasy points against them. So I just wanted to let you know. So tonight when you're trying to go to sleep, you can sit there and dream about what your fantasy football season, what your fantasy football playoff stretch would have looked like if we had Brees Hall still healthy, obviously. Probably the most painful thing of the year, but... If we're looking at actually applying this, maybe you go out there and try to pick up Michael Carter, try to pick up James Robinson just for completely free. Knowing that the Jets also with their record are probably going to be very competitive in these games. These are going to be games that they want to win because as it stands, the Jets have a shot at the NFL playoffs as crazy as that sounds. But, oh dear God, I just I wish Brees Hall was healthy. 
I think that's all we got for you, though. Of course, thank you so much for checking out this video. If you enjoyed it, go down there, drop a like, leave a comment with any questions you have. Subscribe to the channel if you play fantasy football. But most importantly, you better freaking take advantage of this. I worked my butt off to get y'all this Derrick Henry half a rushing yard line for Sunday night. When you go and sign up for Underdog Fantasy Use Promo Good Flock, you are going to get that only if you are a Promo Good Flock user. And at the same time, you'll get your first deposit match dollar for dollar up to 100. Available in damn near every state. But thank you again. I appreciate you. I hope you have a great day and hope we get to see you in the live stream tonight.